Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. It's nine o'clock, so we are going to get started. We're so grateful that you could be with us here this morning. I'm going to let Deb Johnson, president of the ADI board, kick us off this morning. Welcome, Deb. Thanks. Thank you, Jen, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to Appleton Downtown Incorporated's annual meeting. Um, as Jen mentioned, I am Deb Johnson, current president of ADI's Board of Directors, and we're so happy that you have um, joined us this morning to meet in a format that has now become the new norm. Um, I hope you and your respective families are in good health and positive spirits during this difficult time that has affected us all very personally. Many of our businesses stopped very abruptly um, and the return of our business may be gradual, but we are in this together. This will end and we will get through it. We are Appleton United. Please know that Jen and her team have been working diligently to come up with some very creative ways to promote your businesses during this time and she will be sharing those with us in a bit. And they've had to make some very difficult decisions as well. So a big thank you to Jen and her team. Again, welcome. I wish you the best. I wish we were together. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay strong. And back to Jen. Thank you. Um, I seem to be experiencing an issue with my slideshow right now. Um, if you give me just a moment, I apologize. It was working earlier. Now it's not working at all. <laughs> Oh, I love this new technology. You bet. <laughs> well, I will ask for some assistance from my staff. If they can text me, that would be great. <laughs> of course, this would happen. <laughs> Of course. Of course, of course. Well, well, we'll move right into it. All right. Um, well, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Our annual meeting is typically a celebration of announcements, people, projects, places that have contributed to downtown's growth, our diversity, and our overall vibrancy. This morning in our new world, uh, we'll look back at some of the impact from our work and celebrate some of the new development that will help propel us through this difficult time. But we'll also look at our new reality as we live in this temporary pause and attempt to continue our journey forward alongside of our business owners who are struggling and anxious to recover and to get back to business as usual. We're so grateful to have so many dedicated sponsors and supporters that allow us to continue to be there for our small business owners and to continue to move downtown forward and to support this event. We want to thank Tundraland, ASCO Inc., Warning Lights, the City of Appleton, Renewal by Anderson, the Red Line Paper Valley Hotel, NAI Pfefferly and Pfefferly Management, and Hoffman Planning Design and Construction. Give me just a moment here. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting some instruction. <laughs> All right. Apologize. No, there we go. <laughs> it's working. Yay. All right. Thank you for bearing with me. You're all wonderful. <laughs> Just a quick reminder to our ADI board members and bid board members to stick around with us after the presentation. Stay on the call. The public is welcome to join us as well as uh, we go through our voting meeting and bring in some new board members for both of our boards. I would like to take an opportunity to, um, and now I'm going too fast through my slides, <laughs> take an opportunity to thank our team, to thank the ADI group, 
the team that has uh, worked diligently to, to bring vibrancy and to bring excitement to downtown. Um, some of them still able to work al alongside of us from a distance, uh, some waiting to return to work. Uh, we did make a great video to share with you, but every time I watch it, I cry. So uh, we're going to hold off on that and uh, we'll share that with you at another time when we have uh, a little more to celebrate um, as we go forward. As we dive into kind of the work of 2019, uh, we certainly don't want to forget about the amazing momentum and celebration of the projects and the programs and the developments that came to us throughout 2019. And our program of work aligns with that of the City of Appleton's uh, seven key initiatives. And it brings together the ADI and the bid and creative downtown efforts to really leverage and propel our work forward. And we're very grateful for that partnership. And it, it really does bring uh, solid content and work uh, in a comprehensive plan. Some of the work that we do revolves around keeping downtown clean. Uh, the CARE program is a partnership between ADI, the City of Appleton, and Riverview Gardens. And together we, we bring an opportunity for employability skills training for folks that are experiencing barriers to employment, as well as keeping downtown clean. Last year, they collected 422 ba bags of trash uh, and 50 hours of gum busting, which is awesome. Keeping downtown clean, it's important to all of us. And now I can't click my slide again. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Our marketing initiatives are really uh, a center focus for the work that we do in building a strong brand and um, I'm trying to get some instruction here. My apologies. <laughs> Okay. Our initiatives focus on building that strong brand, promoting events and attractions, as well as shopping and dining local. We distribute guides to drive traffic to the downtown. And of course, we're grateful for our partners of Willems Marketing and Be Connected, working side by side with our team to promote downtown as a destination. Um, we have shifted, of course, some of the work that we do in virtual events and promotions like the Shop Hop and the Downtown Dining Days. And I'll take a little, little time later on in our presentation to talk a little bit more about some of our 2020 events and how we're pivoting to continue to connect with the community and with the businesses within the, within the downtown. The work of Creative Downtown Appleton Inc. also partners in with the Business Improvement District and ADI to help to add creative elements to our downtown to become a stronger destination. We support the creative economy and an inclusive community. And in 2019, we saw the addition of the Mile of Music mural painted by our friend Chad Brady. We added some musical instruments. Uh, we added a holiday trumpeter intersection. And of course, other um, nice touches throughout the downtown, excuse me, <clears throat> like seating and lighting. The Business Improvement District partners with ADI to foster greater impact through our programs and our ability to leverage our resources that enhance the district. This past year, we had a, a very successful year uh, the Business Improvement District Board successfully proposed a 10% increase to the bid assessment rate. It's the first increase ever since its adoption in 2001. 
Additionally, bid resources, those additional resources will be used as investments in our facade grant program, our business recruitment grant program, and our maintenance of the district. And all of those programs will continue in 2020. The facade grant program last year uh, very actively partnered with the city's TIF 11 and TIF 12 grant programs. We were able to uh, leverage those programs together and generated well over $300,000 in improvements throughout the district. The bid grant support is supported a total of 15 projects, including exterior renovations such as Eco Candle, Munchies, Gabriel Lofts, and 109 South Appleton. Already in 2020, we look forward to supporting projects like Mud and Prince New Facade and Akoka Coffee's expansion in partnership with our friends at Hoffman. The business recruitment grant supported eight new businesses coming into downtown and we're excited to welcome them. Service and retail business, hospitality business, such as Pioneer Carpet Cleaning, Ivory Rose Boutique, Fica Tea, Delicious. We wanna thank NAI Pfefferly for continuing to attract high quality professional tenants to the district like AIA in the 222 building, bringing 85 new employees to our downtown. These efforts and many more help build a strong economic district, enhancing our walkability and ultimately creating a livable downtown. By creating a downtown where people wanna live now and for the long term, we're creating a happier, healthier community with a strong sense of pride and ownership. We're excited to celebrate the 181 new residential units in our downtown. The first to open this spring was Gabriel Lofts, featuring 21 residential units as well as first floor commercial. Other projects added to the residential, adding to the residential density are Avant, uh, which will take occupancy this summer with 33 residential units. And also in construction currently, Block 800 College Avenue, which will have 20 residential units and first floor commercial retail as well. Additional projects like Willow at River Heath are offering another 110 units of waterfront living all in walking distance to downtown. We'll hear a little more about downtown development from Karen Harkness with us this morning from the city of Appleton. We're very excited to launch our new welcome packet. So this is our packet in action in Gabriel Loss to help welcome some of those new tenants that moved in in April. Well, we'll talk a little bit about where we are today um, and we'll continue some of those conversations. COVID-19 has changed most of our lives. In fact, it has pretty much impacted all of our lives. We've invited some of our sponsors and some of our partners to share a message about our current environment um, and to hear a few updates, kind of a, a state of, if you will. Um, and here to, to help share with us, we're gonna hear from Karen Harkness. Good morning, Karen. Karen Good morning, is, Jen. Karen is the, there it is, Director of Community and Economic Development with the City of Appleton and one of our great partners. Welcome, Karen. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, everyone, and, and good morning. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here, and, and I want to start out by uh, thanking Jennifer and her team and her staff and just reiterating how important ADI is to uh, our communication opportunities and, and the benefits um, uh, that we see in, in our downtown and the events that they put together. Um, we are so fortunate to have ADI and to be able to partner with ADI and on so many sponsorships and, and um, we're just so proud to be able to give money to ADI and know that it's going to be well invested in our central business district in our downtown. And right along with that is my appreciation for all of our small businesses that make up our vibrant and vital central business district. Our small businesses have been, continue to be, and always will be the backbone for America. And um, as people have talked about this morning, COVID-19 has impacted all of us, but the um, greatest impact to COVID-19 besides our health-related impacts have been on our hospitality and travel industry 
and on our small retailers. And um, they unfortunately have shared the brunt of that. And um, we are cognizant of the sacrifices that they have all made. And I wish that we had an unlimited pot of money to be able to help every single one of our small businesses. I wish I had a magic wand to wave to uh, make all of those hardships go away. Unfortunately, I don't and I'm not sure I know one doesn't exist. So um, as Deb started out her, her comments this morning, together Appleton is much stronger as we work together and we communicate and we share what those needs are and we figure out a way forward to what does that new normal look like and I know I'm probably like everybody else on this call I've been participating in many webinars uh, over the last two weeks as to what does that new normal look like? How can we get our, our economy open? And um, I just wanna assure everybody that you know that the city is looking at that. We're uh, in constant communication and contact with our EOC, our Emergency Operations Center, our Director of Health at the city level, at the uh, county level, and at the state level and uh, trying to increase the testing, uh, trying to increase our contact tracing, make sure that we have enough PPE and that our hospitals are poised and ready to be able to address any surge that occurs. Um, those are some baseline markers in order to get our economy open and going. And I think you see from the um, governor's announcement yesterday, some of those guidelines have uh, been reduced and, and we are excited to see that. It's a balancing act to balance our health needs and our economic needs. Um, our economy is always a balancing act and those uh, projects and developments that move forward, we're always balancing many things. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about TIF 11 and TIF 12 were created uh, two years ago and TIF 11 is, uh, thanks Jen, TIF 11 is uh, the Tax and Criminal Financing District on the east side, east end of College Avenue and TIF 12 is on the west end of College Avenue. And the uh, J shape that you see on the uh, screen in front of you is our opportunity zone. And uh, we have been really blessed to see a lot of development in our downtown. Jen talked a little bit about um, some of those. She talked about the additional 181 residential units that are coming online. Those all were approved in 2019. And we still expect to see those all come online in 2020, which I need to give a shout out to our developers that they're um, staying the course and weathering the storm. So uh, we've talked about Gabriel Lofts with uh, 21 units and the Avant uh, Apartments, 33 units. The Zilke Building is uh, still planning on starting construction. Um, they officially are still at 10 units. There's been some discussion about some uh, variation with that yet, but publicly and officially, they're still talking about the 10 units while they're working through some iterations. Crescent Lofts, we're really excited about the Crescent Lofts development. That's the Gannett building. That is a WIDA tax credit project. So that is going to be geared towards low to moderate income individuals. So uh, 58 out of those 69 units will be low to moderate income. And we are committed to making certain that we have all types of living opportunities at all different levels of rent income in our downtown. So we were very, very excited to um, partner with uh, the developers of Crescent Lofts and bring uh, that development opportunity to our downtown. 320 East College Avenue is the old North Shore Bank building and uh, that is Jason Tadich and Tadich Investment and that is uh, 28 units and that's still moving forward. There's some discussion to increase the number of units in that project. So we're excited to see where that one goes as well. Um, we have really been uh, excited 
excited to see that developers are still talking about new development projects, even since COVID-19 and the shutdown of our economy in March. Uh, my team has had the opportunity to meet with several developers that are looking at development sites and developments uh, still going forward in 2020. And uh, some of the reasons for that is the drop in interest rate, that uh, there are some um, uh, financial incentives still available with opportunity zones and with our TIF. Um, Merge is uh, still looking at their option that was approved by our council a couple of months ago. They plan on doing a community outreach in July, and that is for where the old blue ramp was and where Washington Place is. They have not talked about what that project may look like yet. Uh, they are doing their due diligence phase right now, um, but we're really hopeful that July will allow us to have uh, community input sessions for that. Um, the TIF 11 and 12 map that Jennifer had up earlier, I, I think, Jen, we've pretty much talked about all, all of these development projects on this slide, with the exception of um, the now famous U.S. Venture Project and the Mixed Use Library Project. And my staff and I cannot wait for the opportunity when we can give some definitive um, answers to those two projects. Um, unfortunately, the only thing I can say this morning is that there is dialogue and discussion. Um, there are attorneys involved, so the attorneys are talking to attorneys. Both of those are still very important developments for our downtown, and we are hopeful that those will move forward and that uh, all of the needs of U.S. Venture, all of the needs of our community, of our citizens are met. TIF 11 and TIF 12, I wanna go back to that map, Jennifer, if at all possible. I don't know if you can go backwards. If not, that's okay. TIF um, 11 has an amendment that is pending. If you look at the big yellow blob there, that is TIF 3, that was created in 1996. And in 2011, due to some changes that was made at the state level of how the Department of Revenue gauged um, the assessed value of TIFs, that became what's called a distressed TIF. We are no longer able to uh, do projects in that and give any financial incentive. And so what we're doing is we are doing amendment to TIF 3 and removing undervalued parcels out of TIF 3 and we're adding those to TIF 11. That whole project and process has gotten bogged down with a few things going on, but I'm happy to report that today we're moving forward with that project. And um, I have to have uh, some discussion with Mayor Woodford, who uh, per a council resolution has to give me permission to hold a committee meeting to be able to move that forward. So we're working through some technology challenges to make that able to occur. But we're really excited about that because that'll open up some more development opportunities. And we already have developers looking at developing sites that are currently in TIF 3, but that will be moved out TIF 3 and into TIF 11. The other thing I want to talk about, Jennifer's also already indicated this, but due to the uh, partnership with ADI, we have seen a lot of business enhancement grants move forward in uh, TIF 11 and TIF 12. This has been such a successful program. We're really hopeful to be able to roll this out to other areas of our community. We have not been able to do that yet. Um, but these are the TIF grants up to $7,000 uh, to buildings that are located in TIF 11 and TIF 12. It has to be used for a commercial purpose. Either the tenant in there can apply and they'll need the owner's uh, signature or the owner and the tenant or the owner can apply. And these improvements are to the exterior of the buildings. Uh, front facades will have a priority, but um, we are looking at all exterior improvements, including the roofs. 
and uh, we're looking for those improvements to have a useful life of five to seven years. They are matching grant up to 50% of the total project costs. And as Jennifer talked about, 25% of that 50% can be with ADI grants. And this year we've budgeted $42,000 in TIF 11 and $42,000 in TIF 12. Since the shutdown of our economy in March due to COVID-19, we have approved five business enhancement grants. One of those was an emergency grant for a business downtown that while they were moved out of their building and closed due to COVID-19, they discovered they had a rough leak and those are the types of improvements that can't wait, that had to be addressed immediately. So we're really happy and proud that we were able to partner with that business to be able to repair their roof. Right now today, we have a pot of money of $18,800 still available in TIF 11 and $28,000 available in TIF 12. The final comment that I have is that many of you are aware that the city of Appleton is a CDBG entitlement community. And through the CARES Act that was passed a few weeks ago, we are receiving $348,225 in what's called CDBG CV grants. And we um, have not yet received the rules and regulations that go along with these grants. So we're waiting to receive that direction from the federal government. But we are looking at some very creative ways and uh, in constant contact with ADI and uh, other partners uh, throughout our region as to how to deploy these funds to best help our um, entire community. So please stay tuned with that. We hope to have some further announcements soon. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us today and, and sharing those messages and for being such an outstanding partner with us. Uh, we're together, we're together, we're stronger. There's no doubt about it. Thank you. Um, next with us today, our next guest is Manny Vasquez. Manny is the Vice President of Business Development with NAI Pfefferly and Pfefferly Management. And I've asked Manny to join us today to say a little bit about the state of commercial real estate and um, how we're looking here in downtown. Thanks for joining us, Manny. Thanks, Jen. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Yep. Um, good morning to everyone. As, as uh, Deb and Karen said, I wanna thank Jen and, and her staff for all the hard work during these very challenging times uh, and thanks for putting this on. Uh, so I'll, I'll spend a couple of minutes um, talking about some of the the effects that we're seeing from COVID-19 locally. Uh, it's really too early to know the effects of COVID-19 on the local commercial real estate market. It's, it's uh, developing as we all know, um, but we do know that it will impact all property types industrial, office, retail, et cetera, because this will impact all industries, all markets, all communities, right? Uh, we have clients ranging from uh, local retailers to multinational corporations. And I can assure you that coronavirus has impacted organizations of all sizes, some more than others. Uh, and of course, the longer the situation continues, the more likely we are to see lasting changes in the way people interact with physical space. As an essential business, Pfefferly's virtual doors are still open. We're active. A lot of us are working from home and leveraging our investment in technology to get the job done, like many others. Uh, our team is helping commercial landlords and tenants with rent relief questions and discussions. We continue to market properties for lease and for sale using technology more than ever before. We're working with developers and site selectors looking for land to build on. And like Karen mentioned earlier, it's exciting that those projects for the most part are still moving forward. Uh, and on the other side of the house, on the property and facilities management side, uh, our team is still managing hundreds of buildings around the state. Uh, and like many others uh, in, in the economy, like many other industries and companies, we do expect to see a decrease in sales and leasing volume in the next quarter as companies uh, start to recover. 
Um, we also know that social distancing mandates have been hardest on traditional brick and mortar, including our favorite retailers, hotels, restaurants, et cetera, many of them located in our downtown. Uh, so my last uh, two cents worth is that uh, these are the folks who especially need our support right now. I know all of you know this, but it begs to mention again. Uh, so please shop, uh, order in if you're able to, uh, and provide our, our small businesses the support that they really need. And let me know if I really can help you and your business and, and hang in there. This too shall pass. Thank you, Manny. <clears throat> Excuse me. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks for the continued support and partnership as always. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, next with us, joining us this morning, is our, our friend Clay Bell from Hoffman Planning Design and Construction. Good morning, Clay. How are you? Good to see I'm you. Good. I'm good, Jen. How are you? Great. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Good, good, good. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, on behalf of Hoffman, I just want to say how much we appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this event and, and how much we've always appreciated the opportunity to support ADI and their efforts to help Appleton's downtown thrive. Um, I think all of us that live or work or visit the downtown area can agree that the transformation over the years has been just absolutely amazing. Um, it's my humble opinion, but I know many share it that Jen and her team at ADI have been the driving force behind that transformation. Um, so again, thank you, Jen. Thank you, ADI team, uh, truly. Uh, that being said, I'm going to go a little bit off script here and make an ask of everyone. And I, and I, Jen, I apologize. I know this was not in the, uh, <laughs> the approved portion of the script, so you can. You can oh, you're scared. Yell at me later. <laughs> you can yell at me later if you want. <laughs> um, so I know that this COVID situation, we, we've talked it, we've seen enough webinars, everybody's, it's impactful. I'm, I'm not going to underestimate that. Um, and it's presented some huge challenges to all business owners, uh, including our friends and neighbors downtown. So while we're all struggling with what this, this new normal is and what it means to our business and all those things, I, I just ask that you remember ADI as you're assessing your, your sponsorship expenditures for the rest of the year. Uh, social events are a huge part of ADI's operating budget, uh, and unfortunately, we're all well aware of what's happened with social events, at, at least for the, for the near future. So my ask of everyone is that, if possible, um, you maintain support for ADI through sponsorships or in-kind support, or however you've helped in the past that they've uh, truly appreciated. Uh, I, I hope that you can continue that to some level. Um, so they can continue to do the amazing work that we've, we've all had the pleasure of benefiting from. So that's my ask. Um, hopefully I don't get yelled at by Jen for going off script. But How can thanks. I yell at you for that? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. And thank you, ADI. Yeah. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, we did include some additional information in our slide here, and uh, we can make this available as well. We know that business development has changed and how you do business has changed. And Hoffman does have um, a, a webinar on their website. You can go to um, Hoffman, it's, got, it's there under About Us. And uh, you might wanna check that out. Thanks, Anything Jen. you wanna add on that, Clay? Nope, that's perfect, we appreciate it. All right, you bet, thank you so much. Okay. So we do have a, a few of our supporters that were unable to be with us on the webinar this morning, but we certainly want to thank our partner um, at the Breadline Hotels and Paper Valley, uh, our, our landlords. Uh, we, we love having our office there in the hotel. It's been um, obviously uh, very quiet, uh, very somber in that environment. Um, we're very grateful for their partnership. And our partners at Warning Lights of Appleton, they are our barricade company that we use for all of our events. And um, we miss you. <laughs> we look forward to working with you soon. Thanks so much for continuing your support of us. Also with us today is our friend with ASCO Inc., Brett Williams. 
Brett, I'm going to need some help with your video. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Good morning, <laughs> Brett. I'm uh, joining a little bit late. I apologize. I'm out on the East Coast today and we're having internet issues out here. But Oh, dear. I finally got in. Well, welcome. Um, your video is not with us. Are you able to start your video on your end? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I That's all right. I cannot do that. We're happy to hear yeah. from you. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> well, just quickly, uh, I'm, I'm new to the uh, Appleton area. And um, uh, it's been a pleasure so far. I came in at the beginning of the year as president of, of ASCO Construction. Uh, I've been with the parent company of ASCO for uh, 21 years, Burns and McDonald. And um, I can tell you that Burns McDonald has a very long history of giving back to our communities that we live and work in. So it's a uh, pleasure to be a part of this uh, initiative. Uh, as a report out on our business, uh, we're primarily in the industrial construction space. Um, I'm happy to report that, you know, the COVID crisis really hasn't impacted our business that much. Um, uh, we are in a variety of markets, uh, of course, oil and gas being one of them. Uh, that has certainly impacted our business more than anything. Um, what, what I was surprised to see, I think everybody was in our company, is uh, traditionally we've never worked from home. So we have about nearly 8,000 employees in our company. And uh, uh, we all came to an office every day. And with the flip of a switch, everybody uh, worked from home one day. And we pulled it off. I, I, I haven't seen a, uh, a dip in productivity or uh, finances as a result of this. So uh, we adapted very, very quickly. And I think that's a good thing. So uh, uh, the changes we're going through now, and I'm probably speaking for a lot of people, uh, will probably impact us from this point forward in our lives. So uh, not all are negative, some are good. I, I think we need to uh, rely on technology a little bit more than what we have in the past. And uh, stay out of cars and uh, out of planes as much as possible. So um, all that is going extremely well. Um, no one within uh, uh, ASCO has uh, uh, been diagnosed with COVID. I will say that we have had people tested. There's some that should have been tested, but no tests were available. We are scattered around the country. Um, I'm not saying that people didn't have it because I, I think they, they probably did, but uh, uh, we have not had any uh, anybody diagnosed, but we are running very safe construction projects. Uh, we're, we're winning more work along the way, and uh, everything is going much, much better than I could have imagined, given the circumstances. Well, that is some well-needed good news. That's great to hear. Brett, thank you so much for joining us, for supporting us, for being by our side as we work through this very challenging time. And, and we're thrilled to hear that your employees are safe and uh, hard at work. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we get asked daily, uh, what, what is the impact on the businesses downtown? And we did a recent survey uh, last week of our businesses, and we did get responses from about 106 businesses. And we did see an indication within that survey uh, when we asked, what is your real risk of closure, of permanent closure? And we heard from about 30 businesses that indicated that they are at risk for permanent closure within two months or less. We also heard from 33 respondents that said they are not concerned about long-term closure that they are holding on. And then there are those in between. So the risk is real and we identify that and we wanna stand beside our small businesses and we wanna be there for you. The message continues to please support downtown businesses. We will recover, we will stay united, but we need everybody to help in that effort. Stay safe and support your businesses as you feel comfortable. And there's plenty of ways to do that. We remain invested in supporting and investing in a strong local economy, standing with our small business owners, sharing information and resources. We reach out to them twice a week and help to provide uh, resource links. Uh, hopefully we continue to see businesses invest, uh, applying, excuse me, applying for the Paycheck Protection Program, which was now refunded as of Monday. 
Uh, we did see quite a few of our businesses responding that they have already applied. Um, some have already received those dollars, others are still waiting, um, but hopefully we'll see um, some additional support coming through to our downtown businesses. There are now other resources like the Outagamie County program as well. This is a, a loan program. We have put that information out in our uh, e-blast for the week as well. Uh, this is a, a kind of a short-term loan between $5,000, $20,000, 2% interest, uh, deferred payments for six months. It's a great program. Uh, we hope that you look into it. It's in partnership with the Fox Cities Chamber of Commerce, who's been an outstanding partner and resource as well. Uh, we're very grateful for all the partnerships throughout our community, and that that's really has brought us all together. Certainly um, sharing resources and sharing information uh, the best that we can. Many of the programs and projects that we typically do throughout the year are, are going to look different this year. Uh, we do have some new things that we are, are very much excited about and have definitely learned um, through this process. One is the Shop Hop event that we hosted in April. We're going to do another Shop Hop event on May 9th, so watch for that. You'll hear more about that very soon. We're also launching a downtown dining days today, which is kind of of a similar format by utilizing Facebook. We're gonna be sharing some videos. Uh, obviously our takeout restaurants are needing your support as well. And they have some great opportunities to get some great takeout. So be watching for that. We'll be launching a craft beer promotion during craft beer week. We're participating in takeout Thursdays as a regional approach. That's been uh, co coordinated through the Heart of the Valley Chamber. And we're also continuing our Downtown Unites gift certificate giveaway program as well, with support from ASCO and Tundraland on that project. So as you can see, we are very busy. Uh, we continue to reach out to our businesses and to really look for creative ways to lend that support and to bring that awareness and shopping into the district. Let's talk about events. <laughs> we love our events in downtown. The ADI team prides itself on producing outstanding social events for our whole community to enjoy. This year, that may look different. I'll touch on our concert series first. Um, our concerts this year, we are planning to have a plan for 100% virtual shows as well as the potential for using Jones Park as things move through recovery and through the phases. The 100% virtual format, we would partner with our friends at the Outer Edge to be able, able to live stream those concerts out to you so you can put your laptop in the backyard and, and kick your feet up and enjoy some great live music because we know how much live music connects us to our community. And we don't want to be without that this year. So we are diligently working to put both of these plans in place and hope that there might be some type of hybrid um, along the way. Of course, we will work alongside of the city of, of Appleton Health Department to make sure that we are doing that in a very, very safe way and following the guidelines and following the order. We do have a little bit of good news to share with you today. Your beloved farm market will be launching on the 4th of July. We are gonna come in with a bang as we are deemed an essential food distribution center. Farm markets are able to operate. And we will again work alongside of the city health department as we establish a new layout and guidelines and provide a very safe environment for people to access food. Unfortunately, we will not be able to have craft vendors with us or hot food vendors. Um, but we will be able to host our market and we're very excited about that and we look forward to the support and uh, stay tuned for how best to come and shop at market. Uh, we, will be, we will be working, like I said, with the health department and with our media partners to be able to share the best way to take advantage of this event. I would now like to welcome one of our star supporters, Ryan Gottlieb. Brian is founder and CEO of Tunderland and owner of Renewal by Anderson. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Jen, and good morning, everybody uh, this morning. Uh, Jen, again, as others have said, 
Thanks so much for everything that you've put together, you and your team. You know, the work you do is so important. And just creating an opportunity where we can still connect without being face-to-face, -face, it's a big deal. And I just want to take a moment and talk to the other business owners uh, on right now. And look, these are turbulent times for sure. For sure, they're turbulent times. Business owners, entrepreneurs, those that have put their entire life into building a business and then having to do the unthinkable, close down, lay off, furlough, and quickly dismantle that thing that you absolutely love. Look, it's an emotional roller coaster, and I get that. And I'll also share with you that I understand, because you know, we had to lay off uh, and furlough a bunch of people because we don't have events to do or anything like that. So I think we furloughed or laid off about 50 people in total. And so I do understand how you feel. Uh, I'll also share with you that, that sometimes guilt can come along with that. And I'm gonna just say it, you know, screw guilt because the first rule of business is to stay in business so you can have a healthy business that people can come back to, those people that you love and care about. And, and that's really, really important. I do wanna give you a few things to think about though. You know, if you are forced to rebuild your business, you know, do you wanna rebuild what you had or do you wanna rebuild what you've always wanted it to be? It, this can truly be an opportunity to look to the future and not to the past. I'll also share with you as a leader to please give yourself a break. It, often as leaders, we think we need to have all the answers. And in today's environment, that's just simply impossible. Uh, I'll also share with you that what you're learning right now is you're getting a PhD in crisis management. My recommendation, keep a journal because your grandkids need to hear your story. And, and, and you know, lastly, you're a leader. That means, that means to be strong. And, and, and that means you influence people through your words and through your actions. So, so be impeccable with your communication, but also know it's okay to cry when nobody's looking. Uh, what I'll tell you is that when, when, when this passes, we'll have an opportunity to look back on all of this and we'll say, we'll wonder what did we learn about ourselves? What did we learn about our team? And what did we learn about our community? You know, and as a community, you know, working together, there's simply absolutely no reason why we can't rise even stronger. You know, we get to define our future. We get to, I, you know, I personally believe in the power of the human spirit. And, and I always believe that the power of the human spirit is limitless. So, you know, as a community, you know, the circumstances, they are what they are. You know, let's not be a victim to circumstances because circumstances simply don't define us. How we as a community react to them that's what will define us. Uh, I'll share with you that there was some mention about local restaurants and local businesses. So if I can do a quick shameless plug for our business, right now, every single day, you know, every day we have people singing in the shower. We can't do it in public. So we have on our Facebook page, we invite people to sing in their shower at home. And what we're doing is every day, and tag our Tundraland Facebook page, we're giving away a $50 gift card every day randomly to local businesses and restaurants downtown. So, because look, every walk-in customer or every takeout customer makes a big difference in a business li business's life today. So, sing in a shower, tag Tundraland, it's really cool. We also have every Tuesday on our Facebook page, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., Look, a lot, of, a lot of local musicians that make their money off of gigs have absolutely no income right now. So we have Tuesday Tub Tunes on our Facebook page where we have live music streaming and we have a virtual tip jar set up. Uh, Kurt Gunn played last night. It's really cool. It, I'll tell you what I love to do. I love to put on our Facebook Live page and cook dinner in the background and listen to great music. So I invite all of you to do that. I, I, again, you know, most importantly, though, stay healthy and not just physically, but mentally, too. And, and know that you're not alone. I, I, I'm gonna tell you what my phone number is. My personal cell phone number is 920-360-2180. I'm gonna say it again, 360-2180. If you're struggling, please know I'm always a phone call away and the best time to call me is anytime. I appreciate our community, I appreciate all of you and together we're gonna to be just fine, so thank you. Thank you, Brian. I have your number on speed dial, so <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be hearing from me. Thank you for sharing that message. Um, we, we need that inspiration right now. You always seem to lift our spirits when you're, when you're with us, and we're so grateful for your support. Uh, we know that, that all businesses have had to make difficult decisions, and uh, we know that you're going to come out of this stronger 
uh, just like the, the rest of downtown. And we appreciate your partnership. Jen, this is a historical moment for us because it's the first time I was able to do a video conference without my dogs barking in the background. So that's really a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. But we certainly want to thank all of our sponsors, certainly our star supporters, Tunderland and ASCO, and all of our supporters for this event and throughout the year that helped to make our events, promotions, our communication, our connection to the community and to each other um, possible. Um, we want to thank our, our speakers today for sharing their thoughts and updates with us, for keeping us connected again to them and to their business. Uh, we're very grateful for your participation. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you for putting up with my technology glitches. <laughs> um, my team is laughing right now because they know that I'm the tech, not the technology girl by any means. <laughs> Um, before we head into our voting meeting, um, I would like to take an opportunity to thank our board of directors, the board members that um, have stood by us. Look at, they sent me flowers yesterday. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> I, I was having a very bad day and they were there for me. They're amazing. We do have three board members that will be stepping off of our board this year that are terming out. And we would like to recognize them and thank them for their years and years of service with us. Lynn Hagee, retired from Lawrence University. Um, Lynn has promised that she will continue as a volunteer with our organization. And uh, we know that we'll be able to, to keep her connected with us. Uh, she lives in the downtown. Uh, this is her home and it, it's vibrant uh, to have her around. So we, we hope that you stick, stick around, Lynn. John Peterson, who also recently retired from Peterson Birkin Cross. I've agreed to give him a little time off before I pull him back onto a committee, um, but thank you so much for your leadership for our organization and so many others throughout the Fox Cities. Dale Brevort with Crazy Sweet. Dale and his wife, Mary, we know that you have your sights set on the sunny south. Um, I can remember meeting Dale and Mary for the first time, both the crazy and the sweet, and uh, got to learn about their business and be a part of their business start in downtown. Um, we love you, support Crazy Suite. Well, well the, we can still keep them here in the Fox Cities uh, and thank you for your service on the board. We will be welcoming in some new board members to our board as we enter into the voting meeting. Um, Madeira Allen was uh, entered our board as a presidential appointment as a portion of this year and now will be serving a full three-year term. Jay Lizen with Pixel Pro Audio, Cara Manuel, Manuel, sorry, with Lillians of Appleton, and Colby Knuth with Knuth Financial Planning and the 513. So we look forward to bringing you on board. And uh, again, we remind the ADI and bid board members to stick around. I'm gonna be unmuting folks so we can go ahead and roll into our voting meeting. Um, it will take me a few minutes to be able to do that. So bear with me once again. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll get started in our annual meeting in just a second. I wanna uh, take this opportunity to say thank you to all of those who are, are taking that extra step to support downtown businesses right now. To getting your Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday takeout uh, for supporting the retail businesses during our shop hop and, and online and throughout the week. Uh, those businesses need you right now. They need your support. Most of all, stay safe. Uh, keep your employees safe. Keep your business moving along. Know that we are here as a resource. Uh, we want to stand beside you. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. Uh, my, my email is the best way to reach me, jennifer at appletondowntown.org. Uh, it seems to me that, that now that I'm working from home, um, I'm checking that email all the time. So feel free to email us at any point. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we do have a, a chat box open. If there are any questions, feel free to post those. We'd be, be happy to hear from you as well. Um, Brian sent his number again, so uh, feel free to, to give Brian a call. Um, he's a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to business, and we have so many great resources. Uh, I'm sure that there are many folks that would be, be happy 
to share information and um, to talk with you if, if you need to. So again, thank you so much. And we are gonna roll into our annual meeting. And give me just a moment to get those folks pulled in here. Okay, we've got a few folks coming on with us now. I'll, I'll follow you. All right. Okay, know that your mics are, are open now. Um, I have Lynn Hagee. Yeah. Colby, Tara, Jill, Lee, Jason, Gary, Tom, Steve, Natasha. <laughs> Monica. <laughs> Somebody's so fun. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I hope everyone's all right. <laughs> Are there any other board members that have not been unmuted? If you could please post in the chat. Sorry about that. I'm I'm here. Tom. Hi Tom. Madeira, where are you, dear? There you are, Lisa King, Laura. Dale. AJ. Hey, do I have all the board members with us? Hopefully. Yep. I think so. Well, okay. <laughs> Oh, Deb, except our board president, who I... <laughs> Hi. My apologies. Hi, Gary. There we Thanks. go. Thanks a lot, Jen. Okay. Are we, li are we live? <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is live, yes. Okay. Right. No photographs. <laughs> Get the door. Um, I do not have the videos on at this time, just voices. So it will help if you are making a motion. So please use your name. That will certainly help with my tracking. We are recording the event as well, so we will be able to make this available, um, which will certainly be helpful. All right. Are you ready, Jen? I believe we are, yes. Okay, I'd like to officially call to order the um, annual meeting of Appleton Downtown Incorporated and welcome our current departing and future board members. Well, thank you, very good. I will start just by touching on uh, the annual report, uh, which is available on our website. Uh, we will be putting that out in a blast this week as well with a link so people can, can access it. Um, as you're familiar with the annual report, it helps to summarize some of the work. You've seen some of these images throughout our presentation here this morning, but it helps to give a little snapshot um, of the business improvement district as well as creative and ADI. I'll touch on the work plan as well. I talked a little bit about this during the presentation as well. Uh, this is a, a combined work plan with Appleton Downtown Inc., Business <coughs> District, and Creative Downtown Appleton. And we combine these roles together, which really does help to create a comprehensive approach to how we are addressing the key issues that are outlined within the City of Appleton Chapter 14 Downtown Plan. So here you can see I do have all seven pages. <laughs> 
within here. We're not going to go through this as most of the board members have, um, but I will certainly um, touch on any questions that board members might have as it relates to the work plan. Obviously, we are going to be needing this to be a very fluid document this year, as we know that some of the work that we do is going to look different or might not be possible this year. So bear with us as uh, we work through that with both of the boards and uh, look to create um, an update to our work plan throughout the year. Uh, we will certainly be able to bring that to both of the boards as we do that. I don't want to make anybody dizzy, so I'm not going to go through too fast here. <laughs> Okay. Well, the heart of the annual meeting is always the, the nomination committee report and bringing in new board members to each of the boards. We'll start with the ADI board, and we are very excited to bring to the board Colby, Jay, Cara, and Madeira. And um, hopefully they're all with us this morning. I think I, I have seen all of them. So welcome, all of you. And uh, we have a proposal from the nominating committee. One moment here. Thank you. These are the, the nominations that we are presenting on behalf of the Appleton Downtown Incorporated nominating committee. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Are there any other nominations from the floor? I have to ask three times. Are there any other nominations from the floor? <laughs> Hearing none, I would ask for an ADI board member to please entertain a motion to close the nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for the nominees. Motion to approve. Is that Steve? Yes. Okay. Second. Please. Okay. Yeah. Second, this is Deb. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a first and a second. And is there any discussion? Good heavens. All in favor, I will ask you that you uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. signify by the same sign. And if you are opposed, if you would please use your name. Hearing none, our motion is carried, and we welcome you to our board. Colby, yes. Jane, Cara, and, and Madeira, welcome. Yes. If you'd like Yay. to say anything, please feel free. Congrats. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Excited to be a part of it. Yep, We're thank excited you. to excited have to you. Um, see what this is all about. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot in motion. Um, obviously, this is a, a non-traditional type of, of year, and we appreciate your patience uh, giving us another month to uh, get to the annual meeting and to bring you in. Uh, we will be working with you to bring you up to speed and have you join us for our May board meeting. Wouldn't it be great we can all be in the room together and have a board meeting? That'd be yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We will also then, whoops. Apologies. Present the 2020 officers for Appleton Downtown Incorporated Board of Directors, President Deb Johnson, President-elect Laura Vargasco, Secretary Lisa King, Treasurer Steve Lonsway. I will ask for an ADI board member to please entertain a motion to cast a unanimous ballot for the slate of officers as presented. This is Dale and I so motion. Second, Lynn. All right, I have a first and a second. Is there further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by the same sign. Please use your name if you're opposed. Motion is carried. Congratulations, officers. <laughs> What an exciting Ew. year <laughs> to be in a leadership role. Yes. 
All right. We'll move on to our next item, which is the 2020 bid nominating committee report. Uh, typically with the bid, the uh, bid board members are appointed by the mayor. Uh, so we like to look at this as a, uh, uh, reaffirming the appointments. This year we have uh, three term renewals versus new board members joining us. We have a three year term renewal, renewal for Nate Weinberg with Angels Forever Windows of Light. We have a three year term renew renewal for Jason Drexman with Avenue Jewelers and a one year term re renewal for Gary Schmitz, our president. And I know Why? all of you are with Why? us today. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Gary just one year? Because um, Gary was extended um, as uh, current president, but he has uh, co come to the end of his term. Okay. Uh, 2020 <laughs> officers. Then Gary's been with us a long time, haven't you, Gary? <laughs> yes. Good job. The 2020 officers. Then I, I'm going to take these together. Uh, the slate of officers for the Business Improvement District this year, Gary Schmitz, President, Jason Drexman, Secretary, Monica Stage, Treasurer. So I would ask for a bid board member to please entertain a motion of reaffirming and closing nominations and slate of officers and cast a ballot. Jason, so moved second. by second. Monica and a second by Jason, Jason Drexman. Thank you very much. I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify, signify by same sign, but please use your name. Our motion is carried. Congratulations. Great. <laughs> Our next agenda item is to do a review of the 2019 bid, ADI, and creative financial. This is a summary that I will share. Um, so you can see each of those financial statements and closures. I know all of you have seen these already, but indicates uh, our expenditures that are, are bid funded, how that flows into the ADI full budget, and same with creative, how the creative budget then supports the ADI budget with the staff support. And you can see our activity um, as it laid out with events. Uh, was a very good year for events, a very active year, unlike this year, <laughs> which will be a little more challenging. We'll flow into the 2020 budget next. Are there any specific questions as it relates to the 2019 year end reports? Um, both of the boards have already approved this financial, um, so we will just do this as a review. As it relates to the 2020 budget, which we'll talk to next, I will be looking for the Appleton Downtown Incorporated board members to cast a vote to approve this new budget, um, as we, of course, have had to amend our 2020 budget, um, and I would like to go through that then with all of those uh, still on the call here today. So I would like to note first that the 2020 bid budget has not had any changes to it. This is as it was presented um, mid-year 2019. There have been no changes to the 2020 bid budget and how it relates within the, the 2020 ADI budget as well. So I'll, I'll go through uh, the changes that we have made within this budget. So you will see that the 2020 bid reimbursement remains the same um, along with that carryover. Of course, uh, the biggest change being our event sponsorship and revenue declining. Um, our cooperative marketing, of course, will continue as we have produced the guide and we are now uh, working on different cooperative programs and how the and how those look a little bit different, but we'll still continue. Um, our corporate support, uh, we do have a number of members and companies 
organizations that support us throughout the year. Um, we're very grateful for all of that support, many of which have still continued to reach out and to support us. The work of Creative Downtown Appleton Inc. as it relates to um, creative economy and arts programming uh, will also look different throughout the year, um, but we will still have some staff support coming from creative. So looking then at a total reven revenue of 737,986. Then looking through our expenses, event expenses at um, 216,748. Uh, a bit of a reduction for our marketing and printing, although um, still adhering to what will be covered within the bid budget as well. Um, maintaining um, our rent at status quo, uh, carving out some of those general expenses, tightening wherever we possibly could. Uh, maintaining our level of maintenance, care, um, flowers, and beautification um, as it relates to our, our bid support as well. <laughs> um, of course, within our, our staffing, uh, we have uh, definitely made some changes there as well. As we will um, lose an employee this year, uh, we, we want to We'll have some opportunity to thank Greg Otis uh, for his time, but he's he's heading into his second retirement here. But we will, <laughs> we will certainly um, have an opportunity to, to, to hear more from Greg and be able to celebrate Greg's time with us. Um, we have uh, one employee then still on furlough currently. Uh, we have, uh, I have taken a pay cut. Uh, we've done what we can to really narrow in on a, a more manageable staffing budget. Economic development programs, again, stay status quo as what is funded within um, the bid programming. Um, I see that I put that 1760 on the bid budget there. Um, that would then carry over into that ADI budget as well. So now I will entertain any questions that you would have as it relates to the ADI 2020 budget. I know the bid or the ADI board has saw this yesterday, um, but I'll, I'll entertain any any questions. Yeah, and this is this is Gary. Yeah. Um, have you had any luck with um, talking to Red Lion about uh, maybe reducing the rent uh, during these times that we're going through? just for uh, a few months? Um, well, we, we are um, we're working on that right now. Uh, we, we will make it whole. Uh, they're working with us to make it more manageable for cash flow right now. Um, but certainly our goal is to make that whole. Okay. <clears throat> are there any other questions on any of the budgets? Okay, I would ask uh, for an ADI board member then to entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve, Steve. Steve. Second, Laura. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, um, I will ask uh, for all in favor to signify by saying aye. 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 Um, Aye. Those opposed, um, please oppose by using your name. Okay, hearing none, our motion is carried. And we have a new budget. I don't like it, but we have a new budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any new business from the floor for the meeting? <coughs> Back up to the agenda. Here we go. Um, any further discussion? I have a question. I don't know if it was entertained at all, but right now, uh, all the music uh, from July on, it's always free to the public and, and other places like Oshkosh, they have a charge, you know, the sooner you get there, the less you pay, the later you get there, the more you pay. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion about doing that because of the fact we're going to lose at least a whole month of uh, income in June by not having any type of music at all. 
Is that something that was ever discussed? Well, the, I mean, really the reality is, is that we, we, we will likely lose all of it um, as it, <clears throat> excuse me, as it relates to um, concession sales. Yeah. Um, we have had conversation with the health department. Um, there is definite concern about us coming together, which is why we are planning the 100% virtual plan, um, as well as, as looking, <clears throat> pardon me, if we are able to gather in the fall, if we, we may be able to use Jones Park. So of course we're planning uh, to, to know what that layout might look like. Um, but at this point, I mean, the, the ADI budget will, will take a very significant hit um, as it relates to the concert series. Our hope is that we can still retain sponsorship and support to create the virtual format and programming, and that we can share that with the community for free um, Facebook has started a kind of pay to listen opportunity. We don't know much about it quite yet and how that would work, but really um, it's always been our goal. It's always been our, our mission and our passion to, to have that event be a free event. Um, that's why we look widely for our, our support and um, our cooperation with the city of Appleton and how we present those events and keeping them free is, is very important to us. There will be some fundraising around it though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're looking at creating some Downtown Unites t-shirts, um, partnering with, <clears throat> with other nonprofits that we might be able to do a um, donate in support of our organization and their organization for each of the individual shows. Uh, we're looking at, at a, a lot of different opportunities and, and creative ways, different ways of generating revenue, uh, not only for our, events before, you know, our, for our sustainability and uh, how we can then connect people to the businesses. Cause that's really the ultimate goal of all of the events that we host is how do we connect people, customers, community to the businesses, to the, in the heart of the district. So that will continue to be our focus. Any other comments or discussion oh i have oh bill bill i am so sorry bill there you are hi bill wetzel i'm so sorry can, it's okay can you hear i was, I was yes yes i can we can hear you Trying to say hello a myriad of times, and I think I wasn't navigating the uh, mute. Oh, no, that was on my end. I apologize. Yeah, no worries. Just wanted to let you know I was out, out here. But I'm going to probably mute. We have a little bit of background noise. How is the construction project coming? Uh, I'm, I'm standing next to one of the constructors as we speak. Uh, I think it's got its, it's like any construction project, it has its challenges, but it's, it's moving along and the long-term vision is going to be, uh, it's just, you know, in our estimation, it's going to be fantastic. So exciting and uh, challenging simultaneously, coupled with, you know, all we're all experiencing. Right. Well, thank you for sharing a few photos with me. It was exciting to, to oh, see the sure. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More, more to come. We look forward to it. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Um, I don't want to say goodbye. It's great to be with you. <laughs> other than, Jan, I just want to thank you again for all of your hard work and the creative stuff that you have come up with. I mean, I think yeah. you are doing fantastic. And thank and you for my followers. Whoever okay, this happen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ADI board. You brightened my day. I got home from the office um, about 8 o'clock last night. And uh, so thank you. Yes. Well, we will continue to move our efforts forward. And again, please share any um, new formats, new projects that you're hearing different communities doing. Um, we're not we're not ashamed to steal other people's nope. ideas. In fact, we're, <laughs> we're quite good at it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes. So feel free to share and. Um, We'll look for ways to adopt those 
those new virtual formats into our daily lives and do our best to connect community together and to support our small business owners. I want to thank each of you for taking time this morning to be with us. <clears throat> I know we're a bit over our time. Um, thank you for bearing with my technology glitches in the beginning. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> uh, I got it figured out. But boy, uh, yeah, it, it, it can be a little tricky when you have to navigate it all. But um, this has been a, a, a real pleasure to have an opportunity to, again, share our story uh, with the community and with our supporters and uh, share a message, hopefully, of, of uniting. <laughs> okay. All right. Then you all have busy days. Um, again, thank you to those attendees who stuck around with us today uh, to share in the presentation and the voting meeting. Thank you very much for being with us and for standing together and supporting downtown. Everybody be Jen. well, stay healthy. Jen, do you need a formal motion to adjourn? Yes, please. Okay. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Again, stay strong, stay healthy. Will do. Thank you so much. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.